which was made of the seed of David. The wisdom of God was displayed in the whole of the dispensation that related to the Messiah, who, in his human nature, was conformably to many express predictions to descend from David, king of Israel. In regard of his divine subsistence, Jesus Christ was begotten, not made. In regard of his manhood, he was not begotten, but made of the seed of David. John 1.14, Galatians 4.4. 4. He was born of a virgin of the family of David, and the first promise, containing his earliest name, the seed of the woman, indicated that he was in this supernatural manner to come into the world as also that he was to be equally related to Jews and to Gentiles. To Abraham it was afterwards pro promised that the Messiah should spring from him. In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. But as this promise was still very general, it was next limited to the tribe of Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And to David the Lord had sworn, Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon my throne. Thus, as the period of his birth approached, the promises concerning him were more particular and more restricted. The wisdom of God was pleased in this matter to designate the family in which the Messiah, as to his human nature, was to be born, that it might be one of the characteristics which should distinguish and make him known, as well as to confound the unbelief of those who should reject him and deny his advent. For if he has not yet come, it was to no purpose that the prophets foretold that he should descend from a certain family, since all the genealogies of the Jews are now lost. It must therefore be admitted either that these predictions thus restricted were given in vain, or that the Messiah must have appeared while the distinction of Jewish families still subsisted, and the royal house of David could still be recognized. This declaration of the apostle was calculated to have great weight with all, both Jews and Gentiles, who reverenced the Old Testament scriptures, in convincing them that Jesus Christ was indeed the Messiah the hope of Israel. God has also seen it good to exhibit in the birth of Jesus Christ that union of majesty and dignity on the one hand and weakness and abasement on the other, which reigns through the whole of his economy on earth. For what family had there been in the world more glorious than that of David, the great king of Israel, most honored and beloved of God, both as a prophet and a king? And what family was more reduced or obscure when Jesus Christ was born? This is the reason why he is represented by the prophet Isaiah as the rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch growing out of his roots, which marks a family reduced as if nothing more remained but the roots, which scarcely appeared above the ground. And by the same prophet it is also said, He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground according to the flesh. The prophets had abundantly testified that the Messiah was to be truly man, as well as truly God, which was necessary in order to accomplish the purpose of his advent. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part in the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. The Apostle John declares that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This expression could not be employed respecting any mere man, as no one who was only a man could come except in the flesh. Since then Jesus Christ might have come in some other manner, these words affirm his humanity, while at the same time they prove his pre-existence.